Hi, this is Mr. Max. So I am doing trick ratios of angles between 90 degrees and 360 degrees. So I have five questions, so I'm going to start directly with the first one. And uh, you are supposed to solve these questions without the use of a calculator. So we're not really interested in these questions to find the angles. We're not calculating the angles, but we're dealing with the ratios. So you're given that sine theta is equal to 3 over 5. And cos, you're supposed to find the value of cos theta and then theta, not the value of theta. So we're not calculating the angle, but we know that theta is an angle that is between 0 and 360 degrees. So I'm sure you're familiar with the cast diagram, which is just a way that you can remember in which quadrants are the ratios positive. So for this particular case, the sine ratio is positive, because 3 over 5 is positive, in the first quadrant as well as in the second quadrant. So I'm doing them step by step. So let me bring in a triangle there, and let's suppose this is our angle theta, and opposite is going to be this y value here, and the hypotenuse will be that 5 there. Now, remember that 5 cannot be negative. It can only be positive because it's like a unit circle. It's like a point that is moving around. So that's like a radius. So the only ones that will change definitely is in which quadrants your x value is negative and your y value is negative, for example. But here in this first quadrant, x values are positive as well as y values. All right? So we are supposed to find cos theta. That means we need to find the adjacent, which is this particular value here. And obviously, it's going to be x value that's positive over the, remember, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So in order for us to find the value of x, we use Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so remember you're looking for a short side. You subtract the square of the sum, uh, the square of the long side minus the square of the short side. So obviously, that gives you x to equal to 4. Right, now that I know what x is equal to, I can go ahead then, and obviously the cos theta, in terms of this particular value, cos theta will be 4, that is the value of x in this particular quadrant, over 5. It's always 4, the adjacent, over the hypotenuse. Right, and then 10 theta itself is going to be opposite over the adjacent, which we calculated as 4. Right, then in the second quadrant, theta or sine, the sine ratio is also positive. So if I bring in a triangle here and I complete what I have, the side opposite theta is going to be uh, 3, which is opposite here, and the 5 that you see there is the hypotenuse. So we need to establish the value of x, but we know that x will be a negative value as well. The square root of 16 can be positive or negative. That means in this quadrant, x values are negative. And in this particular quadrant, values of x were positive. So now we have our three sides. So we can therefore complete cos theta and tan theta. So cos theta is going to be adjacent, which is negative 4, over the 5, which is the hypotenuse. And then you go ahead and you just write, because remember the whole fraction is negative. The whole ratio is negative. Not just a 4, but the whole 0 0.8 or 4 over 5. So it's negative 4 over 5. So it's true then, in the second quadrant, cosine will be negative, the ratio, because cosine is only positive in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. Then we need to find tan theta as well, and tan theta is positive in the first and in the third quadrant, so I'm also expecting a negative value for tangent. So tangent is the opposite, which is 3, over the adjacent, so that is 3 over negative 4, which cleans up to negative 3 quarters, negative 0 0.75. So to do these questions, you need to definitely draw yourselves a cast diagram and determine in which quadrants are the ratios corresponding. If it's a positive, is which quadrant is it positive? Is all of them are positive in the first quadrant, or the sine is positive in the second, the tangent is positive in the third, the cosine is positive in the fourth. So the ones that are not indicated are then negative. 
All right, so I have a second question here. Given that 10a is equal to minus 5 over 12, so this ratio, the tangent, is negative, you need to find cos a and sine a. So the domain is between 0 and 360. So um, remember, as I said, you don't necessarily need to calculate the angle. We are not looking for the angle, all right, because we would have said find the value of a. But here we want cos a or sine a. A sin A if you shorten it. So when you realize that the tangent ratio is going to be negative in the second quadrant as well as in the fourth quadrant because it's positive in the first and the third. So I'm doing the second quadrant. Let me bring in my right angle triangle here and see what I have. So this is the tangent. Tangent is opposite over the um, Adjacent, so opposite is 5 and the negative 12 here because values of x are negative. So we need to find that hypotenuse which we can find using Pythagoras' theorem. So that gives me that that hypotenuse there is 13. So now we can actually go ahead because we've got all the three sides of the right angle triangle given. So you can find cos A, sine A, and you use the ratios, the sides that you are given. So, for example, to find cos A, cos A is the adjacent, which is negative 12, over the 13, which is the hypotenuse there. And remember, I said the whole ratio is negative. So, the answer there for cos A is going to be negative 12 13. And sine A is 5 over the hypotenuse. So, that ratio is positive, And surely, the sine ratio is positive in the second quadrant. But I said that the solution also is in the fourth quadrant because in the fourth quadrant, tangent is also negative. So if I bring in the ratio or my triangle here and I'm going to complete what I have, the opposite angle A is negative 5. It makes sense because values of Y as you go down should be negative. And the 12 here, values of X will be now positive 12. Okay? Right? So now you need to, we already determined what our hypotenuse is. So here x is 12, and here x was negative 12, depending on which quadrant we are looking at. So now I've got the three sides. So when we have all the ratios, we can all the lengths of the sides, we can find the ratios. So the ratio then for cos A is nothing but the adjacent, which is 12, over the hypotenuse. And the ratio then for sine A is negative 5 over 13 which makes the whole ratio negative. And surely, the sine ratio is negative in the fourth quadrant because it's only positive in quadrants 1 and quadrants 2. And make sure that domain is from 0 to 360 degrees. Sometimes the domain is restricted, and then you will see I'll bring in a question like that. Right, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I have a third question here. Now you, they say, given that cos B is equal to minus 4 over 5, so in which quadrant is cosine negative? All right, you have to find sine B and tangent of B. Now, this domain is restricted only between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. So cosine is negative, as we know already, in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. However, the second quadrant is not within the given domain. So our answer is only going to be in one particular quadrant, okay? The others then, we're going to block them out because the domain is only for angles between 180 and 360. But I cannot consider the fourth quadrant because cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. So now I only have one solution, which is in the third quadrant. So bringing in a triangle here and filling in the values I have, the negative 4 is the adjacent, and the 5 here is the hypotenuse. So we need to find this y value, which will be negative, because in this quadrant, values of y are negative. So using Pythagoras, you will realize that I get y to be nothing but negative 3. Right, so this is a typical 3, 4, 5 triangle. Now we have all the lengths of the sides given. We can therefore find sine b and tan b. So sine b is going to be opposite, which is negative 3, over the hypotenuse 5. Therefore, the whole thing is then negative 3 first. And now, tan b, the tangent of b, remember, is the opposite over the correct, over the adjacent. And you have a negative 3 over negative 4, making that to be positive. And surely, the tangent ratio is positive in the third quadrant. And it's also positive in the first quadrant, but the first quadrant is not part of the domain. 
Right, so we have got question four. They say find sin x if cos x is equal to the square root of 3 over 2, or the square root of 3 halves. And now they tell you that x is a reflex angle. This is just another clever way of giving you the domain. So we know that an angle that is between, or that is more than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. That is what a reflex angle is. All right? So, but now you have to consider in which quadrant is cosine positive because this ratio is positive. And surely it's only in the fourth quadrant and the first quadrant, but the first quadrant is not part of the domain there. So our solution is only going to lie in the fourth quadrant. Right, so let me bring in what I have. I have the square root of 3, which is adjacent to this angle x, and the 2 here is my hypotenuse. So what I'm looking for is the value of y, and based on that value of y would be negative. Okay, I hope you can see that, because that quadrant, as you go down, values of y are negative. Right, so now we need to find sine x. So first, before we can find a sine, we need to determine what this value of y is. So for that, we use Pythagoras, and I realize then the value of y is negative 1. So please pause the video so you can see how I got to that. Remember, the square root and the square cancel each other here. Right, and you're looking for a short side, so you need to subtract the squares from each other. So y then is negative 1. So now the sine of angle x is negative 1 over 2, which makes the whole ratio to be negative half, one half. So that is the only solution here for sine x. Remember, we are not finding the value of x, but we are finding sine x. What is that ratio? And we know that in the fourth quadrant, the sine ratio is negative. Okay, and this is the particular answer, and we realize our answer here, our ratio is negative one half. Right, so I've got a fifth question without the use of a calculator. You're supposed to determine the following. So you've got 15 times the tangent of theta, minus 8 is equal to 0. Ultimately, you need to isolate, so this becomes 10 theta. But the domain is given between 180 and 360 degrees. So we first have to simplify this, because we need to find 10 square theta. Right, so let's find first our 15 10 theta minus 8. Let's let's isolate so we can have 10 theta. So first you move the 8 becomes negative, 8 becomes positive 8. Then you divide by 15. So here we now know that the tangent or 10 theta is positive. And as we know already from our cast diagram that the tangent is positive in the first quadrant as well as in the third quadrant. Right? And here it's negative. But our domain is only from 180 to 360, which also then eliminates this quadrant here. Okay? So the only quadrant that we are working with is going to be the third quadrant. Okay? And that will come in handy whenever we are going to do a B part to this question. But for here now, we just have to take our ratio and square it. All right, so let me just clean this up so that uh, you can see exactly my diagram as I have done it. So as I've indicated, I bring in my triangle here, and I bring in my values with respect to theta. The opposite is minus 8, and it makes sense because negative 8 values here, as you go down, is negative. And in this particular quadrant, we expect the tangent ratio to be positive, and surely negative 8 divided by negative 15 gives you 815. Right, so what 10 square theta means is take this ratio and square it. That's all that you got to do. So 8 times 8 is 64, and 15 squared is 225. And that does it for part A. Now part B, sin square theta plus cos square theta, for those of you who are doing, uh, thinking of doing A level, and also higher level, the old syllabus, you will know that it's a Pythagorean square identity. So square theta plus cos square theta should equal to 1. So let's see if we use our ratios. But now here we have got a sine and a cosine, which means we need to be able to calculate the hypotenuse here. Because in terms of theta, we only have the opposite and the adjacent. But to do the sine, we need to find the hypotenuse. Now, finding the hypotenuse gives us eventually to be 17. Now I can bring in my fractions, but I'm going to square my fractions. So negative 8, which is the sine ratio, is negative 8, the opposite over the hypotenuse. And I'm going to square that, plus the adjacent, which is negative 15, over the hypotenuse. I should also square that. So you go ahead and then you clean this up.
So you have negative 8 squared is 64, 17 squared is 289, minus 15. Remember, anything that you square, be it negative or positive, is going to be positive. And 17 squared gives you 289. So ultimately, it's 289 over 289, which equals to 1. Okay? Right, so there's a C part. So I'm bringing the diagram back here. And uh, don't forget, click that notification bar. I'm going to put quite a lot of the videos up uh, on any problems. This one was requested. Uh, I hope that uh, it is helpful. So this part, we need to find sine theta divided by cos theta. Now, if you are also familiar with this work, you would know that sin theta over cos theta should equal to 10 theta. But let's see if we do get to that 10 theta, OK? So let's then just write it nicely as sin theta divided by cos theta. So I have got sine theta is opposite, which is negative 8, over 17. And I divide that by cosine. Cosine is negative 15 over 17. Now I'm going to change my negative to a times, and I'm going to take the inverse of that fraction. And then it becomes a little bit easier. I can actually go ahead and I can cancel the 17s. All right, taking out common factors. And a negative 8 over negative 15 is nothing but 8 over 15. Now let's just look at that 8 over 15. So we have got negative 8 over negative 15, and what ratio does come to mind? Of course, it is the cosine ratio. The cosine ratio is the opposite over the adjacent, which is 8 over 15. So that means that sine theta divided by cos theta is nothing but 10 theta. Okay, so please, if there is any request, just send a message, keep the messages positive on the YouTube channel, and uh, I will solve the questions for you, and then you can be prepared for the examinations.